somebody that has always been very interested uh, on you know uh, issues that are relevant uh, you know to people's rights especially back home here uh, in Zimbabwe and then most importantly people's rights relevant to our identity or my identity as a person of Mutara uh, you know, origin as a person that belongs to Torres Nation within you know, 
this country. So Ubundelele Bami is something that I've always prided myself with. And it's something that I've never hidden. I remember when I was 19 years old, uh, doing a lot of this work, writing you know, letters to try and uh, you know, contribute towards a change where I thought things were not being done right. The government here received many letters from me even dating back uh, as early as when I was 20, 21 years old. I used to write continuous letters to, uh, to the government, to the president, to international governments. So I'm not somebody that if they, you know, if somebody wanted to, to know where I come from in terms of my interest of human rights and politics in general, I'm not somebody that started yesterday. But came a time when I had to also obviously uh, prioritize my, my, uh, my interest or my issues based on uh, the logistics of what was possible. So maybe I took a break on some of the, you know, on some of the activities just so that I can move on certain things. <coughs> And then recently I re-engaged myself back into politics or into political interest and human rights issues, social, social rights and economic rights and so forth. So 15 months ago, uh, I, you know, an idea came to me. And that idea was, what could I do uh, that could really have an impact or that could really speak a different language in a different way? both physically and verbally, uh, that maybe could incite a bit of interest or excite a bit of interest from people that would witness it. And that's where the idea of uh, doing a walk came to mind. And that uh, idea was, I say to myself, you know, how about if I just decided to walk from Ebulawa and going to, uh, to Harare, but what do I call it? Uh, my you know, you know, my concern was, you know, all the conversations, uh, you know, all the, you know, of the grievances that were happening around issues that affect uh, our Tuaregs, people of material and immigrants in general. And I said, you know what, I want to, uh, I'm going to go and do a walk that is going to be called Mind Tuaregs in Mashabizu walk of freedom. It was a, a walk that would be titled, you know, my Torah is much as the walk of freedom, my with an emphasis because the intent of the walk itself was not uh, to organize, uh, you know, was not to organize uh, many people, uh, you know, to, to, to come out into the streets and uh, start you know, airing grievances and protesting and demonstrating. Uh, the idea behind the walk was uh, for me as an individual to be able to express, uh, you know, my feelings about Ugo Tarazvani, my feelings about Ugo Ndewelevani. And I, you know, I, I made it a point to everyone that spoke to me uh, about why are you saying my, because you should be organizing people, you should be getting other people involved. I said, yes, uh, my Torah is the walk of freedom, is a walk that uh, is not closed to the outside uh, world or to Abanyaba Torahs. What, uh, what is important or what, uh, uh, you know, the reason why I am titling it my is because I am going to put out statements or reasons that are going to be, to be the purposes of the walk. And anybody that identifies with those reasons and those purposes, I want them to be involved, to be included in the walk on a personal capacity because they relate to the issues that are being, you know, that are the primary purposes of the, of the walk itself. So therefore, when I told Zenzo later that, uh, listen, I'm planning to do a walk, and this is what the premise of the walk is all about. He made his own decision that he wants to be involved. And the same thing with this story. And then there were other people that, uh, you know, joined us in other ways, uh, such as whether it was in kind, or, you know, people that joined us for, for short paces, or for shorter distances. Some people walked, 
you know, uh, 10 kilometers, some people walked, you know, 5 kilometers, uh, the elderly and the young people that joined us along the way. We have a humongous amount of footage and, uh, and, and videos that uh, show uh, how much uh, attraction or tension we, uh, we gathered as we walked from Lawe to Avare, uh, you know, engaging in dialogue with Zimbabweans across the country about, uh, you know, the purposes of this work. And I'm going to jump now quickly into what the purposes of the work uh, were. And, uh, you know, as I do this, uh, uh, I hope you will uh, uh, bear with me because I'm going to be referring uh, just for the, the purposes of sequence to some of the notes that I, I forwarded already to, uh, to Mr. Tuso here, to which he said he would share with some of you if you already received it. So the purposes of, of, of the work. Primary purpose, uh, as we were walking from here uh, to Harare, the primary purpose was really uh, to begin a dialogue that uh, you know that tackles or approach, uh, approaches the issue and the grievances of abattoirs in a different way uh, than what we are hearing every day, uh, you know, and uh, <clears throat> without taking uh, you, you know without uh, withdrawing credit from anybody uh, amongst those that. Uh, have been in the forefront within our region, within the country itself, is Zimbabwe. Without taking credit away from them about what they uh, about what they have been doing to try and air the grievances of Ugutwara and and what issues we have been faced with, uh, both in celebration and also in disappointment, anger. Uh, you know, whichever way you know you you look at it, depending on where you come from. With, uh, with your emotions. I decided that uh, we are going to, uh, you know, to take a different uh, platform uh, than what people are used to. And that platform, uh, you know, would then be to, uh, to talk to people about the importance, one, the importance of uh, Zimbabwe realizing, uh, uh, you know, what it is, what it really is, is historical, what it is formed of historical. And in many cases, I always open up to stand to correct it. Uh, our country comes from a history that is very rich. Uh, our country has got a, you know, a foundation, uh, you know, that is rich, uh, you know, with diversity, with culture, with ethnicities, and all that stuff. But what is most important, which is what we were sharing with people as well, as we walk from one end of the country to the other, is the very fact that going to the pre-colonial era of this country, uh, you know, seldom it, you know, it is accepted or it is recognized uh, as some of us believe and do understand that uh, Zimbabwe, uh, prior to uh, colonialism, was, you know, uh, you know, a region in Africa that existed with nations that were sovereign one versus the other. And this region of Zimbabwe itself had a nation or two or nations that existed and cohabited uh, and that were later put together or brought together by the colonial forces uh, to be one country that is surrounded by the map of Zimbabwe that we have today. And that is Imashona and Lemtaras. So that is the, the, the historical background that unfortunately some of us, uh, you know, feel very, very cheated and very, uh, you know, uh, dealt a very heavy blow in the fact that uh, I think in general our country <coughs> has not, uh, you know, through the leadership that has been present in this country for many years, uh, you know, the true history that is relevant to grow this country has not been taken as serious. And in certain places, has been ignored, uh, you know, not by mistake, but purposely as a way of pushing, you know, political agendas from whether it is the pre, you know, whether it is the colonial powers, the British themselves to name them, or whether it is the pre-colonial powers uh, beyond that. Um, <clears throat> I'm, uh, you know, so as we were, as we went from uh, Lara to Harare, we spoke a lot about that significance of Zimbabwe as a binational country that exists uh, with two nations within it, 
and those nations becoming Mashonan and, and Mutagas, which is Matilda and the Middle East. And uh, you look at the historical administrations that were done in this country as we know, as we live in it today, those historical pre-colonial administration or colonial administrations administer this country uh, following uh, the existence or the legitimacy or the credibility at the time as they saw it of the, uh, the, the nations as they saw them to be sovereign to each other. Then came, uh, you know, the time for, you know, us to fight for independence. <laughs> And when uh, the time to cut and fight for ind independence came, obviously uh, we formed alli alliances were formed by leaders from both these nations uh, for us to gain our independence and freedom from the colonialists. And that, uh, you know, that struggle to, for, for, uh, you know, for us to, uh, to get our independence from the colonialists uh, was not an alliance that was formed uh, potentially. Some of uh, the gentlemen here are older than me, will probably tell me a better history than I'm narrating here. But that uh, you know, alliance was not formed only between, you know, uh, for the first time, uh, you know, when ZANU and ZAPU you know, uh, you know, were created, uh, in whichever way uh, you know, their secrets were, you know, went. But it dates back again to the 1800s. All that history, it's history that unfortunately we have lost along the way. And um, I remember uh, one of the, uh, when we reached Harare, one of our intentions in Harare was to hand in a petition to the president's office. And uh, one of the clauses or one of the uh, issues that uh, we discussed in the petition uh, that uh, we handed to the president's office uh, when, we, uh, when we went there was the very fact that the supreme uh, law of this country, which we respect very much, which is the constitution of this country, uh, you know, acknowledges, on problems, I believe it's the second paragraph of it, acknowledges the historical wars, the pre-colonial historical wars of this country. And it, begin, it begins with a, with a war that is the only war that I studied when I did history in this country, and that is the Chimrenda War. Anything that is beyond that has always become irrelevant. And uh, uh, when I read the Constitution of Zimbabwe as a person of Mutaraz or as a person of Indebe, uh, you know, I then ask myself, do I really belong here? If uh, uh, I know that, uh, you know, in 1893, which is several years prior to 1896, when the Chimrenga happened, there were several wars that were fought by the Matevele warriors uh, to fight colonialism. But those wars are not mentioned anywhere within the history of, uh, the, the official history of Zimbabwe, whether it is the history that our children learn in school, you know, or the history that the adults learn, whatever they, or talk about, whatever they, 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 they speak. So there is, there's always been this unfairness that has happened on one nation versus the other. And this is just a typical example, but this is one of the points that I say, okay, if we have to speak about fairness and our fairness begins, uh, you know, our fairness has to always be that of uh, certain people compromising uh, the truth, uh, you know, uh, that they are, it is okay for them to remain irrelevant. Uh, as long as they are nice, they will be comfortable. But once the truth comes out, then, you know, uh, it means that uh, you know uh, you are not you know the victim is not being fair. Why are you worried about uh, the, you know the truth? You should worry about uh, you know what's going on now and uh, you know and, and forward. So we presented that petition and uh, it was accepted. Senior officials. It was the time when the ZANPF at a conference here at Tsukodini. We met them along the way as we were traveling to Harare. We had a dialogue with them, just a casual, friendly dialogue with uh, with uh, you know with them as well. Uh, because they also had a team that was working this way. And then, um, you know, another thing that we also dialogued along the way as we were doing the work uh, was uh, the issue of devolution. Uh, this country speaks a lot about the issue of devolution, uh, and especially now, it's something that has always been, uh, you know, a, a watermark in the politics of Zimbabwe. And most importantly, Matevele is something that has always been a big issue uh, because Avanti Matevele uh, you know, have always 
from my experience, I've always felt, uh, you know, left out or, uh, you know, uh, cheated with respect to control and power of this country that actually share equally because of the history of where we come from. And um, the, the issue of it evolution to me uh, becomes a very important part when, uh, you know, as a person of whom Tara's uh, because it is an issue uh, that, or it is a program that if it is done properly, the way that it should have been, dating back probably to the Lancaster House Agreement itself, uh, there wouldn't be people in Targas probably talking about uh, the issue of maybe even an independent state of uh, Materelland or of Targas in Mashona. Why? Because uh, they feel that uh, uh, you know, everything that Materialiland has tried to do to be a part of Zimbabwe has failed uh, because of the unfairness, the injustice, the, you know, the brutality that has been, uh, that has been dealt uh, the region. So, you know, then it leaves that one choice that says, if you, you know, for, for, uh, for uh, you know, us in Materialiland here, it is only f you know, fair then to say that uh, for many of us, including myself, uh, for many of us that uh, truly believe uh, in the idea of devolution, and devolution simply meaning that, uh, you know, if I, uh, you know, live in, uh, in Chirezi, uh, I should benefit as much, uh, you know, from the resources in Chirezi uh, before priority is given to somebody who lives in Dal. And if I live in Bulawayo, I should benefit as much from the resources uh, and uh, the jobs and the opportunities as possible than a person uh, that lives in Gai. It has nothing to do with the tribal differences per se, as it appears to be in most cases. But revolution in its truest sense, you know, giving power and giving opportunities to the immediate local communities and then from the immediate local communities going out to the regions themselves, uh, which is okay. Uh, if I live in Tagas region, it is okay for me uh, to find myself engulfed with a majority of Tagas culture, with its diversity, uh, than with Mashonaland culture, with this diversity. And if I live in Mashonaland, that is the same story as well. So I want a situation where if I am in Harare, I should feel like I'm in Harare, and I should want to learn to, uh, to, to, to live like a person, uh, you know, to enjoy the culture of being in Mashona or in Harare. And the same thing should be the case when somebody is here, uh, you know, say Bobulawa. They should feel like, you know, Bobulawa, and they should feel the pride of learning uh, the culture, uh, you know, and, and the traditions of Ugotaras within the region. So that, to me, those are the types of uh, you know, issues that uh, the true devolution, in my uh, you know, thinking or with my opinion, uh, would mean. And that's one of the you know, dialogues that we were encouraged when we were working. And then um, the, the Unity Accord, 1987 Unity Accord, on 22nd of December. Now, that unity accord, I mean, that unity day of the 22nd of December that we celebrate every year, uh, you know, I don't know how many times I, I, I speak to people, you know, within our communities. And uh, I want to listen to women particularly, and uh, they say, well, but when I love a unity day, you know, what unity are we, are we, are we really talking about uh, when we refer to the unity accord or to unity day, you know? Uh, because the reality of the fact is that there was a, you know, an atrocity that was happening, and it was happening severe, and it was happening um, you know, greatly within the, uh, the neighborhoods of Matevele or Utaras. And that was the Kukurahoni atrocity. So, uh, Izapu or Ungwom was given as a, a very simple choice, or had a very simple choice to make, uh, you know, which if it was myself, I don't know uh, whether I would have made the same choice that he did, or whether I would have made a different choice. But the choice that he had was to hopefully try and stop Kukuramundi going on, which was the massacre of civilians or innocent civilians. And in order for him to do that, uh, what he was given 
was a decision, you know, what he was, uh, you know, asked was to make a decision of get, uh, you know, of signing an agreement for Zappo to uh, to get into Zappo, I mean, into Zan. And uh, to me, when I celebrate Unity Day, I see it as a day that uh, was not done in good faith because it was to unite Avant Messi and Avant uh, Messi Shone. It was a day simply to uh, have somebody surrender politically and with the choice that once you surrender politically as a political party, then uh, you know you can go ahead and uh, you know, live a, a better life than what is going on now. So Ungo made the proper, you know, the decision that uh, he was going to surrender uh, you know, his after into Zan, so, so, so that uh, he could have only, you know, stops. So simply put, to me, the 22nd of December remains a very significant day, but I prefer not to uh, look at it to me as a significant day because it united myself with my brothers and sisters from Ashwagandha as a region. But uh, I prefer to look at or to interpret the 22nd of December as a you know as a day that probably meant a lot uh, in stopping the atrocities that were happening uh, throughout uh, you know Torres region or Matavele and, and the Midlands. Uh, it's something that uh, is a very very sensitive subject. Whenever you know in Zimbabwe we talk about uh, you know issues affecting uh, you know Mashona land or issues affecting material land, uh, you know, eyebrows, you know, start to raise uh, because now in the world and you start uh, talking about uh, prioritizing issues uh, to promote or to empower or to develop, uh, you know, um, targets or material land, then all of a sudden uh, the issue of credit uh, tribalism comes up. Uh, you know, the issue of, uh, you know, have you considered, uh, what about, uh, you know, have you considered the, you know, uh, the Shonas as well? So that comes, uh, you know, into question. So the subject of tribalism to me is something that I've grown with in this country. It has given a lot of people discomfort uh, when they intend to speak about their own importance. Uh, you know, and I think it's also primarily because of the way in which uh, history has been, uh, you know, uh, made in this country, uh, the way in which uh, you know, our politics has been played pre, uh, you know, uh, independence and post uh, independence. So those are some of the reasons uh, for which, uh, you know, we, uh, I believe, in my opinion, uh, you know, a, a doing by people that. Uh, you know, had a, a you know a, a hidden uh, agenda, starting you know uh, from pre-independence uh, to divide and rule, and therefore creating uh, you know Mashona land, which in itself probably uh, you know makes irrelevant many different tribes within what is called uh, you know uh, the Shona people or uh, the Shona nation. Shona nation comprises of multiple tribes as well, as we all know or ethnicities, or even races. So, if we really, you know, look at Shona as a tribe, which tribe is most significant there? And then we come to the Ndewele, if we look at uh, Ndewele as a tribe, which tribe is significant? Is it the Nguni tribe of Akulumis in Ndewele? Or is it the Tonga, or is it the Venda, or is it the, uh, the you know, the Kalanga? Which tribe is it? So that is where the unfairness comes into play. So again, we were going around teaching, talking to people as well about some of these issues. And even in Harare itself, uh, or in Kadomo, in Chekut, in Chekut uh, you know, we had droves of people coming to us uh, in support and just wanting to listen to us. That's where we arrived. Uh, that was our. our uh, you know, our initial destination, and we talked to people there, you know, there were so many people that uh, gathered around us to hear us speaking as I've just spoken here today. From there we went into Harare, first street, we walked around the city of Harare, uh, and we just talked to so many people, and the most amazing people that uh, wanted to hear this uh, were the youth, because they felt that they also 
probably has been cheated by the history of this country that has not taught them the importance of uh, who they are and the truth about where this country comes from. Why uh, the people of Materele all of a sudden feel that uh, uh, maybe it's okay to talk about a separate uh, state, uh, you know, or uh, you know, to, uh, to feel that they are not being dealt, uh, you know, a fair blow. So that's uh, the presentation that uh, you know. I guess I'm going to, uh, you know, to end with uh, at this point. Uh, thank uh, you know, thanking everybody again uh, from here. I'm going to ask just Zenzo to talk a little bit about. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to ask Zenzo to probably talk a little bit about uh, you know his personal experience and uh, what uh, you know uh, the work meant for him. For me, for two seconds, the work meant a lot. It taught me a lot about Zimbabweans uh, as a whole, and also about our tuggers in Zimbabwe uh, and uh, about machinery in Zimbabwe. It taught me a lot. The humility that we received. Uh, we were sleeping in people's houses. The humidity and the welcome that we received from people, it was amazing. And I didn't even know that it was, that our country was like that. Uh, before, I thought that uh, if I go to my journal, uh, you know what, I'm gonna meet a lot of uh, the, the, you know, people that are disgruntled about my identity, that are disgruntled about me when I say Mumu But we had people in Harare holding this placard as high as their shoulders to show that they actually support the idea of us uh, as a developed nation also being as important as what the Shona nation has been made uh, in Zimbabwe. And that's <coughs> the amazing thing that came out of it for me. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity that I have been given in your attention. Uh, my name is Zenzo Sizira, the former student at HRT High School. I was doing all the I went during the June and November examinations and I'm also an author of actually uh, I would say four books but just launched uh, three books My Life Without Direction, Breaking the Codes of Limitations and The Lost Generation. Uh, I actually uh, was invited uh, at a personal or spiritual level that would you mind uh, to be engaged to, uh, to a hawk, my hawk, uh, which uh, got so many uh, actually uh, reasons uh, why is it we are supposed to walk actually from Bulawa to Harare. Imagine just walking. Uh, when I, I heard about Mr. Tawos, they were telling me about, uh, no, if you want to join me, but it's uh, on your personal cap capacity, which is my hawk. Uh, from Bulawayo to Harare, and I asked him, what is it all about? Because I never understood anything about, especially uh, the Mtaras thing. If you talk about the Mtaras, especially when you're at secondary level, somebody will tell you, no, I only know political parties or political issues about the Mtaras. So I said, no, <laughs> I don't have the time of uh, political things, because I'm still, I'm still a student who's doing Form 4. But he said, no, do you know who are you? I said, uh, I know who I uh, actually I know who I am. So who are you, Zenzo? I said, I'm, I'm Zenzo Sizima. And uh, I'm in Debe by pride. I said, okay, yeah, in Debe I understand. Which tribe do you belong to? Debe. How? Debe is a nation, it's not a tribe. So I said, no. I think uh, I should learn a lot on what really uh, this Mutualist thing is about. Then the uh, first thing that uh, I learned, because you cannot just get engaged. And I said, hey, well, if you don't know, what is it all about? I wanted to know a lot, because I'm always hungry. When you just introduce a, a lesson or something to me, I would, I would give you the attention to learn a lot. So I said, no, please, at first, before I attend it to this work, teach me what is it all about? So he said, you know what, I know uh, you, you are equal to, to learn a lot on what is it, uh, this Mtwaraz? The Bulawayo is called, welcome to Bulawayo, the city of Umtwaraz, which covers of so many uh, tribes from uh, the Nebele nation. So I said, okay, fine, I understand that they are nations, uh, they, are, they are tribes on this Nebele uh, 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 nation. So should I get in, uh, involved in this? 
it, you need to know who are you and where are you coming from exactly. Then I said, okay, it's fine. Uh, I will actually uh, attend to the uh, to their work. The first uh, thing that uh, we did, uh, we actually this as, as I said, it was not it was not uh, organized. It's like we know that when we uh, move here, we're going there, we're going there. Uh, it was uh, something that was going to be organized during the walk. So the first day uh, of the walk, it was uh, very amazing because there were so many people who wanted to talk to us. Guys, are you serious that you are going to run on foot? Uh, yeah, no, this, this point, you cannot go to run on foot. You know, how you, no, 800, and, uh, actually 60 or 40 uh, kilometers from here. So you cannot talk something like that. When you went to Sky's Metro FM, we talked about uh, that you are going to have your People are saying, uh, if you see them on the road, help them with water, help them with food. So I said, wow, oh, I think uh, this walk is going to teach me uh, a lot. So uh, the first day uh, of the walk, I was going step by step because I still have the walk in my mind. <laughs> uh, we actually uh, started at the Joshua Cabo statue where we had so many people and made a silent prayer then we moved along uh, almost about five kilometers with the people who were accompanying us saying we wish you all the best we are going with you we will be with you in spirit i said yeah i think so not gonna be easy the first day we went uh and we slept at uh, david livingston you know what when we reached uh, in Dawas and Duna, it's David Livingston, I think this is in Dawas and Duna, yeah. So people, uh, when we, start, we went to a certain uh, house, we asked for a place to sleep. They said, uh, no, we cannot just accept strangers. But I said, uh, we just tried to explain what, is, what are we going forward with. Uh, to understand, you see, when we f you face uh, other people who do not understand about their tribe, or we have been uh, actually mentally abused because of uh, so many uh, things, especially uh, our elderly people who were uh, involved in, I will mention it, uh, passing, who were, uh, who were involved in Kukurawondi. Some, some of them, most of them are trusting other people. It's not easy, you see, because their families have been uh, actually uh, mentally uh, slaved. So we went to sleep at, uh, sleep at uh, David uh, Livingstone, where uh, that's the uh, that was our first uh, uh, reception that we received when we moved uh, from here in the city up to David Livingstone. It was very amazing because we got a, a, a guy who was interested on uh, on us. A gentleman was very, was very interested on our our our, uh, our work, and we told him on what is uh, what are we moving with, and he said ah, I will try to join you. We were shocked to see him uh, on the last day, but uh, we actually received uh, a very amazing reception at uh, our first uh, place where we slept, and then we moved on uh, day by day. You see, when we are moving on, now it had came, it came a time when we were supposed to actually order, order ourselves in eating logistics and uh, how we live handle ourselves. You see, this wasn't easy for us, but. Uh, the main purpose of the work, it was to teach uh, actually people about who they are. So many people, uh, they don't know who they are, especially our youth of our generation. Uh, when I attended the PNC, where we had uh, a, 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 work, a small work there, uh, so many youth, they don't know who they are. And they just say, I wish if there are people, if they are elders, <coughs> sorry, who are still there to teach our, our young people, our young youth, who they are, which tribe do they belong to? What are some of the things that we are supposed to recognize? You see, we only know about our independence. That's what we know is uh, the youth. Other things, uh, even to go and uh, actually have a memorial at the uh, Imbem Bake of Members there to, these are some of the interesting things I never knew about them. A uh, Pongo Memorial. So I said, oh my god, I never knew about these things. And then now it's, it's up to me uh, to actually teach other uh, young stars and the youth uh, how important uh, is the um, Twaga's nation and uh, its uh, beautiful and 
uh, resources. We have so many beautiful resources here that need people who can actually take care of it. It cares there. You see, we have so uh, beautiful trees that we can also uh, actually care and make uh, this uh, for roofing and other things. But we are not even uh, have that mind of actually uh, starting th those projects because it was a part of our, our work to see how beautiful is the nation of Mutawas. Uh, each place where we moved, we would say, do you know what, what we have here in, the, in our region? He said, ah, you now we don't have anything. Everything was taken. By who? <laughs> By who? Everything was taken. But uh, where, where have I moved? I, I saw it. <laughs> Our things are there. It's us. Awesome. We don't want to wake up and smell the money. We start going and collecting our whatever is there. You see, our land. Yes. Our land is there. We are, we, I, I don't know what is really awaiting us. Not uh, to actually uh, start, out, uh, start uh, up our own uh, 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 projects and other things rather than to be employed by someone. You need to be to employ others to come to you. That's why I always told people when we uh, were during the work, they say, Which tribe do you belong to? What are you doing with your tribe? Ah, my friend, oh, yeah, the floor just the CIOs. They will know, no, no, I don't want to talk about my tribe. I, I'm okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> See, are you stressed about uh, I will tell you this. Uh, it's a survey, a survey river. They, there was a group of people that uh, we don't know where they are coming from. So, okay, I'm now teaching you guys. Uh, please, just be patient. I will tell you. Then uh, the other gentleman said, uh, just ask me. Who are you? Uh, I don't care who I am. As long as my family and I will eat it and I drink my whatever I want, it's okay, fine. Actually, that's what we want here in Zimbabwe. Because uh, I cannot drink anything. So it's okay as it is. Please, go, go away with me. Whatever we hear, you hear. I cried and didn't say, Lord, we are supposed to teach these people. You see, they are supposed to know who they are. So this work, uh, some of the things, this was uh, um, my first thing to see. Now I have the vision of who I am, and uh, I can, if I teach people who they are, someone will say, no, I need to research about my senior. Deep, 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 where, oh, where are we coming from exactly? Because this was not a political work. It was uh, my personal, my father's, my father's work of freedom. Where we are teaching, we are teaching people about who, who you are. Shine with your tribe. Be, be, be who you are. Don't wait for someone to tell you, now you can, can raise up, now you can sit down. No. Stand up and uh, tell, the, tell whoever, no, I want now to actually uh, move on with the life. You see, one of the things that I, I saw, which uh, Mr. Sizi just uh, said when he was passing, the Tonga people, they are now afraid of speaking the do Tonga in, uh, in, the of in our offices. When they come here, uh, when they come here in our offices, even to say in his own language, someone say, I don't know, ah, this is You might say, oh, I need so. But we are supposed to respect actually uh, other tribes and also <coughs> shine always when we are together and see that each and every uh, resource and uh, Na, uh, we, that we have here in, Amate, in Matebele land and in Mashona land in whichever province we are supposed to actually respect uh, the tribes and uh, everything that they have and also they must respect us so that we become one Zimbabwe and we know that what is really uh, we are supposed to do as a nation not to divide uh, actually say no we don't want that. We need to be together. That was one of uh, some of the things that uh, the work was actually uh, speaking about uh, from Bulawayo to Harare. When we reached the, at Harare, you see uh, these banners. Everyone wanted to say, let me take a photo with your banner. Let me, how? Are you not a Shona? No, 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 no. This is very interesting. This is not about Shona people. This is not about the very people. It's about who we are. So many people are loved uh, this work, and we also received the, the most uh, greatest uh, reception that we received. Actually, I will tell the truth. It was from Ashona. People from Ashona actually uh, received us uh, with uh, wholehearted. 
people in Matibele and some of them, most of them were afraid. No, no, no. We'll move uh, on the pick up so that when they are now beating, they will start with me and say, But this guy is, why are you doing this? You are supposed to shine with the tribe. So, uh, this is uh, what the work was uh, all about to teach people about who you are and who I am. Let's respect each other's culture and let us come together, think like a family, like other nations, what they do. Uh, with this, I think I have touched so many things about the work. Okay, thank you very much to, to sustain this, uh, this, this campaign. Because I know this is a campaign which is not, uh, which, is, which is a serious campaign which needs sustainability. <coughs> and uh, when we use the momentum that we've had, this thing may be just like collapse. How to change to sustain that decision? Yes. So, well, maybe I'll take two questions. I'm happy that he said that uh, he doesn't know his too well. He mentioned that when he was doing it. Um, and I advise you to read more. Um, who would you blame? For, for the history, because you said um, a lot is not mentioned in, in our in our history or in Zimbabwean history. Uh, who would you blame for that history um, of this country? Mm -hmm. the history? Yes, the, the history of the country, because a lot is not said. And also, you, you touched on the, on the devolution thing. Um, what you said, Matabele, um, if it's a big detail, they must have their own resources as, as Matabele. <coughs> and they must use it in their own resources. Um, um, if, if I remember well, um, we have Chiagwa there, and uh, 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 the richest person, the property of is the richest from Chiagwa. It's got almost, almost the whole of Victoria Falls, but the richest came from Chiagwa, it is my legal age. Um, I'm out of balance, right? Okay. So the, uh, I start with you, yes. Mr. The issue of uh, sustainability, the amazing thing about the, uh, this type of a program, I've never been somebody, I'm not uh, on a campaign uh, for dominance. I'm not here on a campaign uh, to try and uh, you know, dominate a certain area. I am just a simple human being that has had the opportunity and the ability to go out there and express myself and say that whoever identifies with you know, how I choose to express myself as Mutara, you know, is happy to have a conversation with me. And if somebody does not identify with the issues that I try the most about Mutara Zivani, then guess what? That's exactly where the issue of democracy, uh, the issue of embracing other, you know, different opinions and other cultures comes into play. And I also respect to agree to disagree with people that uh, don't understand where I come from with regards to, how, to what I believe about Mutara's value and where, uh, you know, I may have been, uh, I may feel to a, 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 you know, a bad law. So, the sustainability of our program, when I go <coughs> to, to, to Canada, uh, Zimbabwe right now, I understand, is one of the few countries that is the largest community in the diaspora. In Canada, there is over 100, probably there is maybe close to, close to 100,000 if I'm not wrong, or tens of thousands of Zimbabweans there. So, I speak to Zimbabweans uh, in Canada. I went to the Zimbabwean embassy, I, you know, when I uh, talked 15 months ago when I talked to Gabriel about this work, and they invited me at the Zimbabwean embassy to come and talk to them there about what it is that I was going to do. Working about, and I talked about everything that I've talked about here today. The embassy had this, the president's office had this, the home affairs had this. They even got documentation about everything that I talked about here today, as far back as uh, 15 months ago. So, uh, you know, the sustainability is there. What is important is that uh, uh, is the coordination of the programs between our discussions around awareness. Uh, you know, within the Zimbabwean community or people from this beautiful country, uh, how we communicate and then coordinate these amazing ideas about embracing one another uh, in the diaspora, whether it is in Canada, and then with our relatives in other countries coming right back here to, 
uh, to be out to Zimbabwe. This country's independence was actually achieved with the majority of its leaders, or many of its leaders, fighting from exile. And uh, that, to me, speaks for them. So anybody that says you cannot make a difference while you're in the diaspora needs to just read the history of Zimbabwe. And then coming to, uh, to the issue of blame, uh, you were talking about blaming, uh, who do I blame for the history? The amazing thing about me, uh, which is the different platform that I like to take, uh, you know, from what we are used to in the communities, is that I'm the type of a person that has no time for blaming anybody. There is no need to blame anybody. When it comes to blaming, you blame yourself. The moment you do this, four fingers are pointing at you. So I don't have room to blame anybody because the only people that should write the history of Mutarats and the history of Mashona are the Shona people. And for, for Mashona and the Ndebele people from Mutarats. I don't expect somebody from Chipinga to write history about, about, uh, about me because they don't know me. And neither do I know the, you know the history of somebody from Chirets. So if I sit here and say the government is wrong, they should have brought the proper history, who is the government? It's supposed to be the people. But those people have their different diversities, which is where it goes back to what we were talking about. That that plain issue that you are speaking about phases away the moment people know who they are. We are not simple Ndebele and Shona. We are big nations that form this country with huge diversities that must embrace each other and live together within Zimbabwe. And that diversity is the history that has been lost, that we cannot uh, you know, focus on uh, who to blame. I mean, if you want to find out, uh, let's say you want to go on a, a marathon of blame, we can certainly find people to blame. We begin with the British. They did a lot of distortion uh, with our history. Amazing distortion. Actually, uh, this is my belief or my opinion. Most of our continuation of the distortion by the British came from a paternity that was passed on to, to, you know, to stupid Africans, which is our leadership, when they took over this country. The Lancaster House Agreement was not done uh, you know, in, all, in all fairness to the uh, significance of the two regions that formed this country. If I was sitting at the, at the, at the Lancaster House, probably in 1979, and I was Joshua Homer, and I was Robert M. Garvey, I would have probably wanted to know from the British why they are encouraging a situation where uh, this country that they are saying they are surrendering independence back to, they are now surrendering it as one you know, big farm when they actually uh, confiscated it or stored it as two separate farms. So we begin there. So the, the you know the, the issue of devolution uh, again is most comfortable with, or is most thought to you know to, to, to deserve. It's a deputy position in politics. It's the secondary position. What about the Tonga? The Tonga of the Bund. What about the Venda? What about the the Chaman, the Karang? What about the Zezulu? What about the Korekwa? I walk. I'm thinking about what you guys did for me today. So the issue of devolution, uh, you know, go out there and hear the people's cries. How many people are out there uh, crying about what Zenzo was saying? Some people, you know, uh, saying, well, you know what, we, everything is unfair. We feel that jobs are being taken away by people from other regions. And if you remember me, you know, me well, uh, well, I say that. A devolution, unfortunately, hypocrites have looked at devolution as something that is about making sure that the is I mean, uh, Shona people don't uh, uh, work in, uh, in, 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 in Matibele Lake. First of all, Mtagazi has, uh, and, uh, you know, Shona people uh, within itself. You know, and uh, Mashona Lake has Matibele people that are from Mashona Lake by heritage, by birthright. So you cannot uh, uh, look at it from that way, you know, from, from those lines. You see, you see what I mean? So if I talk of devolution, all I'm saying is, if you go to Mbari um, and there is a business opportunity that uh, you want to uh, present or to, to, to provide in Mbari, get people in Mbari to, to, to work first before people in Noto. 
What's wrong with that? Why does it have to be the winner against Sean? It's because of the politics that we have. <coughs> that when you're talking about devolution, you're talking about Ndevele separating from Mashona. That's the ignorance that has been provided to our community. So that's my response to that. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Sisiba, for your response. Um, I think I'll take the last round of questions before we pause the session. Uh, Mr. Mbava, I don't know. Then it will be the last. Yeah, maybe you can enlighten me on uh, the issue of the is it a, a country, or is in Tukas, Is it a, a group of who are who are trying to fight to touch themselves from Zimbabwe to be an independent country? This is what I understand. Okay. I was watching it this comedian, the lichen written to the column, that in that um, it turns things to shit, you know, column is part of where it turns things to shit. So I want to know, you're mentioning that Britain is involved in the running of many countries. So what are Britain's limits? When will they stop interfering with Africa and their former colonies? I think you can tell the these two questions then. When I, I get that question, uh, what is in targets? Because that's where we have big issues. Um, the, the identity, see, I remember at one point I was pointing to somebody and I said, what is Sean? Is this a group of people that are trying to, uh, you know, to be funny to the Indirectors? Or what is Sean? What is China? Can you tell me what is Chinese? What is a Colombian? If a Colombian walks in here or an Indian walks in here and they say to me, and he says to me, I'm Indian, and I say, what is this Indian thing that you're telling me? What's Indian? That's me. It's not a group of people, it's a nation of people. Ntwagas is an identity. Uh, and uh, you know, the, the unfortunate thing is that uh, credit to the colonialists, uh, they found it better uh, to, you know, to re-identify Ntwagas as materiality because it was the easiest way of creating the confusion in the, you know, and uh, the Zidigas, when the Zidigas formed, uh, formed the nation of Umtagas, uh, when uh, the leadership of, of the area under Queen Muto was there, Zidigas uh, gave the honor, uh, you know, the honor to, uh, you know, to, 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 to the Abato by naming the, you know, the nation of Umtagas after Abantu Bagamut, Abato. So to me, just simply put, without giving credit to the, to answering, to justifying why I identify with Ubu Tuaras, I was born within the identity of Ubu Tuaras, right from the, found, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the founding fathers of the nation itself, the kingdom. It was Umtuaras before it was known as Matirele. And that's just what it is. So today, with this resuscitation, or with the resuscitation of the, the, the identity itself, uh, people are kind of getting confused because now it is, people are reviving their identity prior to the colonial era. And the world is now getting a bit of a surprise with Zimbabwe uh, at large, even our Tuagas themselves are getting a bit of a surprise that uh, you know, it's scary that, but uh, you know, Mutala is in the you know, what's the Mutala is the thing? It's us before we were. So we were what uh, we, are, we are known as now. So, in, in short, again, uh, you know, what I want to say is that Mutala is a nation of, it's the Ndevele nation. You can look at that way. And the Ndevele nation is not people who speak Ndevele. If you refer to one of Bomo's videos on YouTube, he says that uh, as well, uh, just as uh, one of the people that uh, also made it very clear. And the very nation, you know, is not people that uh, you know. It, the very nation is not people that speak in the very exclusively. It's the Donga, it's, it's the Midlands and Matavelen in general. And uh, if you look at the history of this country, in as far as Burundi is concerned, even it happened throughout the Midlands and Matavelen. 
And that was the Ndebele people that were being massacred. Not the Nguni people that speak is in the Ndebele that I'm speaking now. There are probably maybe a very small percentage of the Nguni people that would have died compared to maybe the Dong and the Venda and the, and the, and the Kalana and, uh, you know, and the Rosu and the Omoyo and, 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 and whatever. There's probably more people that died there than the actual Nguni that speak is in the Ndebele. Ndebele is the royal language within the nation. So uh, maybe I don't understand you uh, aspect of when you say it's a nation. Mm -hmm. When you say it's a nation, is this supposed to be a country or what? To be detached from Zimbabwe? No. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. machinery is a nation. Mm -hmm. The beautiful thing is that when I identify Mutavas as a nation, I also identify machinery as a nation. Because machinery, uh, you know, has got a multiple diverse of cultures and tribes within itself. What is Mashonali? When people of Mashonali pride themselves with their united culture, what are they? They are a nation. And the very sovereign that is that which gives you a headache outside there. When somebody says, Iwem Shona or Enam Debe, is the very evidence of the fact that there, there, there is a difference between these nations. And you go to Binga, you go to Bait Bridge, you go to Lupane, you go to Kwekwe, you go wherever, you'll find that there is, there is, you'll get the same response or the same behavior or the same cultures or the same attitudes as if you go to Chirezi and you go to, uh, you know, to, to, to Chipinge and you go to Arari and you go elsewhere. So, uh, you know, if we ask ourselves what was in the uh, prior to 1893, what was in it didn't exist, we know that. But what was there? What are these things that were happening? When the colonialists came into this country and landed in Arara in 1890 in November, uh, what, were, what did they identify that place? Who did they identify it with? And then, uh, you know, in 1893, when they moved into Matewerele or to Mutaras, uh, who did they identify uh, you know, that area with? Why did they, uh, you know, land in this area and stay there for three years trying to uh, to figure out their next uh, move, and then go and land in this area, uh, and, you know, trying to, you know, to, to, to continue their theft. And so, then they so, form so, the so, 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 no, no, no. So in actual fact, Mtwagazi is advocating for self-governing. No, you have yeah. to understand, Mtwagazi is not advocating for self-governing. Mtwagazi is me, your brother, in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. <laughs> I am advocating for fairness. For you to understand that in Mutwagazi, I'm going to live with you in Zimbabwe for life. And I want you to be fair with me and understand that in Mutwagazi, and that's it. If there is a person out there that belongs to, maybe, let's say, MRP or MLF, Mutwagazi Republic Party, or Mutwagazi Liberation Party, or Mutwagazi something, it is equally the same as, saying, as, as, as comparing ZANU PF as being Zimbabwe. ZANU PF is not Zimbabwe, ZAPU is not Matabele. Mutwagazi Republic Party is not uh, Matabele, is not uh, Matabele and Om Tuaraz. These are political parties that, just like you can open a shoe store and call it uh, Mutwagazi Shoe Repairs, or Zimbabwe Shoe Repairs, you are priding your, 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 your product with the region of the country that you belong to, or the nation that you belong to. I mean, as Mutwagazi, I belong to a country, and the country is called in Zimbabwe. But the nation, that uh, forms Zimbabwe, the nations that form Zimbabwe is Mashonaland and Mutwagazi, Matebelele. And the British colonized this region of this, I mean, this area of Africa with its independence uh, state or with its sovereignty, identifying their sovereignty. But they cheated us in 1979 when they signed, the, the, you know, when, 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 when independence came, because they created the environment that. Uh, you know, there is this one beautiful farm that they found and they are giving it back. It wasn't one beautiful farm that they found. They found two fraud sovereign states that were living amazingly, uh, cohabiting. And history was created uh, to distort that. And then beyond that, guess what? Came the irrelevance of materialism versus the relevance of machinery. And that's a fact. Then you talk of the Kukurahun. And that's a fact. So now what we are saying to you is <coughs> Eventually, my little brain would tell me that eventually, uh, if uh, people do not, if our current generation does not find it within itself to be humane enough 
uh, to take this matter very serious. If there will be a generation potentially that may eventually pay uh, for the injustices that are caused, or that are causing some of the emotions that we find out there, uh, that uh, are making exactly the type of belief that uh, you were coming with. That says, you know, those Mutalazi, are they trying to advocate? Mutalazi, go ask outside if uh, first in the matter that uh, you meet outside. Ask them if they want to separate from Zimbabwe. They'll probably tell you to go and turn. Because that's not what they want. Why did MRP probably not get, uh, you know, 90% what's in material? It's not because material people are stupid. They know who they are. So Mutalazi, and if you go outside with the same token again and ask, uh, and the very person, if you know, Umu Mutaras and is proud of Umu Mutaras, they will tell you, yes, I'm proud of Umu Mutaras. But are they advocating uh, to just separate from Zimbabwe? No. But guess what? There is things that are happening out there now that are causing this, disco this discontent which may grow with time. That if the systems that are in place now don't want to create the environment of fairness, then certain people will begin to say, hey, maybe we need to go back to what is actually a right. Mashonaland uh, has got the right to exist with its sovereignty, and Mutawas has got the right to exist with its sovereignty. British have, you know, uh, the, the British have, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, responsibility as well uh, of correcting it. They know what the, the, that uh, they, they are the ones that are responsible for the destruction of the kingdom. Now, going back to uh, going to this question of the sister that uh, uh, Ulu that asked about uh, the British involvement and how far and so forth. I think one of the biggest things that uh, are unfortunate is that Britain probably uh, is one of our biggest massacres of our state, uh, of, our, of our nation as we try to end. Uh, you know, uh, we hope that with time, uh, you know, as people begin to be respected for what is protected within the United Nations the Charter of Human Rights, which is our sovereignty. Our sovereignty does not mean that Mutara is separate from Zimbabwe. Our sovereignty just means that you should be able to rule yourself within uh, you know, your culture, within your birthright, within your region, within your area. There is nothing wrong with, uh, <coughs> you know, with Mutalas or uh, Materialand saying, hey, we want somebody who, op who rules or who governs this place in any capacity to be, to be able to relate with, our, uh, with who we are. As much as uh, somebody in Mashonan will tell you that, listen, if you come from Hulawa, uh, from Luvevo, from where you are trying to come and uh, you know, run my affairs here in Tbinge, uh, it doesn't make sense. What are you going to tell me? What do you know about Tukushona Rami? What do you know about Tukushona Rami? It doesn't make sense. So, that's, that's what Okay, I'm coming to Chris Daniel, the last. Thank you, Mr. Stone is going to give us a good of things. Sure. Uh, I wouldn't want this time. I think it's the best uh, for the interest of time or um, seem this time. Okay. Or for making a remedy. So I think it's think of all the things in the Okay, uh, the, 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 uh, proper, the four halls of this uh, building. Uh, we feel that it's an important story. Uh, it's an important uh, campaign again that that you you, you participated in. I am very much excited that young people like uh, Zenzo <laughs> also found it uh, important to partake uh, in the work. And I was very happy to hear your experiences as a, as a young person. We are very inspired by your bravery. It's not easy, definitely, to walk from here to to, <laughs> to Kweru and later on Harare uh, and so forth. But I, 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 I think it's a challenge again, especially to young people, your generation, to say what is our contribution and what is it that we are doing as young people who are growing up in this kind of uh, environment, in these times, like you say, uh, I, I think right, that if certain issues are not revisited with a view of correcting the injustices of the past, no, there is so much that we, 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 we can actually, I think, as, as, a, as a country, as Zimbabwe, we don't want to descend into such kind of chaos like we have seen in other countries. I think that is the reason why it is very important that we engage in these frank conversations. I think from the engagement, you can tell that uh, 
there is so much learning, so much sharing that, uh, that, that needs to be done in a frank manner where people are freely engaging with a view of learning, sharing, imparting. That's how we build actually. Nations are built through conversations, through dialogue. And uh, I think if you've been following events, there is even a call for national dialogue, but on the political front. Yes. But it is, I think, very important that uh, you, have, you have embarked on this journey on cultural identity. It is very important that as Zimbabweans, as people from our uh, various regions, we retrace our, our steps and locate our identity. You referred to China. I think one of the reasons why China is, is a superpower today is because they, they never left their culture. The Chinese are very powerful because they have harnessed the cultural heritage and that has actually paid dividends. And I think as, as, as Zimbabweans, we need to do that. And by those few words, I, I wish you the best in your campaign. I'm happy that you are already sharing your story. I saw some footage and you have Zenzo who is a young person, but who is also an author. Uh, one challenge that we have as Africans is that we don't document our stories. And that is the reason why the British uh, distorted our history and so forth. And we entrusted them with that very important uh, uh, responsibility. Uh, it's time we reclaimed it and told our story, ourselves, as Zimbabweans, as, as, as Abantu, Bagum Tagazi, Abantu, I think if, if we are to be frank with ourselves, uh, uh, we can actually have a very constructive conversation that can empower us as Zimbabweans in our diversity. And we can actually leverage mm -hmm. from that diversity and be a powerful country that is called Zimbabwe. I would like to thank the colleagues for their patience. I know they took time from their busy schedules, some are busy with their diaries, but they are here to engage. Uh, and uh, the colleagues, obviously, for the drinks that, 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 that we have enjoyed. Thank you very much. I wish you the best in the journey. Thank you very much. Take it down for me. Take it down for me. Sure. We coming from the west. We bringing our best. Just to let you know, we coming from Bula. City of kings, city of kings, city of justice. Oh, Bula, why Yeah. We coming from the west, we bringing our best, just to let you know, we coming from Obulawayo, city of peace, city of kings, city of justice, Obulawayo. Hey, uh. Omo la mpopo mantumba ni makandeni, nguwa yenza, steli sasuke tatina, steli gamna nditina, hey, uh. Omo la mpongo na ntumba ni makandeni Nguwo yenza Steli siske tatina Steli gamna nditina yeah. No matter what comes and go We stand together No matter storms and colds We stand together Rise up, rise up, rise up, to our sea, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, to our sea, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, to our sea, rise up.